Uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, uh, computing with uh, joint PMFs of two random variables. Okay, so you must have seen Prosarvin's lectures on how to do computation of marginal PMF from the joint PMF and how to do computations for probabilities of different events involving two random variables. Okay, so these two are extremely crucial ideas. Uh, once again, in this lecture, I'm going to take some simple examples and illustrate how to do these calculations. So let's uh, begin. So this is a computation with the joint PMF. Okay. So the first example I'll take is some sort of an artificial example where I give you the PMF and then I ask you to compute uh, some basic things. So that's also very important to see. Let's take a joint PMF. Once again, I'm going to have this notation for the joint PMF where I put a table and then I put probabilities uh, corresponding to the table. Okay, So I'll take a very simple case where x takes two possibilities and y takes three possibilities and I will then put uh, probabilities here. Now remember I have to put probabilities so that they all add up to one. Okay, And I will do it in a certain way. I mean one can do multiple things here. It's, nothing is really uh, uh, critical here. So let's say I put point 0.1 here, point 0.3 here, 0 0.05 here, 0 0.4 here. I'm just making it up as I go. Uh, so maybe 0 here. And then I have to put here something to make it a valid PDF, PMF. Okay, so I put some values here for X and for the joint PMF of X and Y. I've put uh, 1, 1 as 0 0.1, 2, 1 as 0 0.3, 1, 2 as 0 0.05, 2, 2 as 0 0.4, 1, 3 as 3 as 0. What should be 2, 3? In fact, I can find out what should be this guy. Why is that? Because all of these guys should add up to 1. Okay, what are they adding up to? 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.85. So this should add up to, this should be 0 0.15. Okay, so this makes it a valid PMF. Okay, so this is one check. Uh, like I mentioned, you have to always run, particularly when you calculate complicated joint PMFs. You should ensure that they add up to 1. That's, that's a valid uh, condition. Okay, all right. So now uh, let's do uh, computations now. Uh, the first uh, computation that you should, uh, it's important to understand is marginal PMF, okay? So this, uh, like I mentioned, is the joint PMF of X and Y, okay? This is the uh, notation that I have for it. Now, the marginal PMF of uh, X, okay, has only one entry here, X is 1, 2, okay? So basically, this tells you uh, what is the probability that x is x, right? This is simply summation over all y probability that x equals x, comma y equals y, and that is simply the probability joint PMF of x, comma y. Okay, so for every x, what should I do? For every x, suppose I want to find the probability that x equals 1, I have to add the joint PMF over all y. Okay, so I should simply add up all the, the entries in the column here, I will get the uh, probability. So this will just be 0 0.15 and this will be 0 0.85. Okay, so how did I get it? 0 0.15 is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 plus 0. 0 0.85 is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.15. Okay, what about the joint PMF, uh, the marginal PMF of Y? Okay, so here uh, once again, if you do this calculation uh, carefully, I have to add up the values in every row, right? So if I can repeat the same thing, you will you will get the final formula as PXY of X comma Y. You add up over all values of X, keeping Y as the same. So Y is 1, so I have to add up 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, I would get 0 0.4 here, 0 0.45, 0 0.15. Okay, so this like, like I said is 0.1 plus 0.3, this is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.4. This is 0 plus 0.15. Okay, so this is the way to calculate marginal PMF from the joint PMF. Simply add over the columns or the rows. Okay, so in this simple example, it works out quite nicely. In more complicated examples, uh, like say the trinomial example that uh, Prasad did for you in uh, the lectures, you, you have to do more sophisticated computation. But essentially, the idea is the same. Okay, so you add up over uh, one of the variables to get the marginal PMF. Okay, so that's important to understand. Okay, so the next uh, uh, next uh, interesting calculations that Professor Arvind does is he asks questions of events based on this joint PMF 
and then asks for probabilities of them. So let's do a few events. Okay, so the first event I want to do is x equals y. Okay, so what is the probability of x equals y? Okay, so, so suppose somebody asks you the question, what is the probability of the event x equals y? Okay, so here, so the first thing to do when you're given a problem like this in multiple random variables, so one random variable, is to first describe the event very nicely. So in this simple situation, one can de de describe the event as the set of possibilities that x and y can have. Okay, x can take two values, one, two, y can take two values, one, two. So if x has to be equal to y, x comma y should either be one comma one or two comma two. Okay, so it's easy to list out this uh, possibility here. Uh, so let me do a, a maybe a blue uh, calculation here to show where the event would be x equals y is this event, right? Right. So this is the event one comma one two comma two x and y are equal x could x and y could be both one or x and y could be both two. Okay. So the probability of this is simply pxy 1 comma 1 plus pxy 2 comma 2. So you have to simply add those two guys. It's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 that's 0.5. Okay. So that's how you do events. Now you can do any other event of this form. There's nothing uh, sacred about x equals y. Uh, for instance, you might want to do probability of x greater than y. So maybe I'll use a different color here. I'll use a green color for this event. So if x needs to be greater than y, if you, look, if you look at this possibility, the only way in which x can be greater than y is this guy. Okay, there's only one possibility by which x can be greater than y. Okay, so once again, if you want to write that down, uh, x greater than y, the only possibility is x equals two and y equals one. And uh, so probability of x greater than y is simply pxy of 2 comma 1, it's just point 0.3. Very simple example. And you can also do maybe one more example. Maybe I'll do that on this side. Probability of let's say y greater than x, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So maybe I'll use a violet color for this. And uh, if I do that, if uh, I'm going to skip a few steps, do it a bit higher, a bit quickly. So if I want y to be greater than x, the possibilities are these three, right? And the probability of uh, that is simply going to be simply going to be 0 0.05 plus 0 plus 0 0.15. That's 0 0.2. Okay, so this is how you do simple events. In this uh, easy case, if, if of course the, the case uh, the situation becomes more complicated, you have to do more sophisticated calculations. Like for instance, in the trinomial case, uh, the calculations are not so simple. But nevertheless, the idea is the concept is exactly the same. Okay, so let's uh, let's also do a few more uh, examples. Uh, the next example is conditioning, right? So conditioning is another thing that uh, Professor Arvind talks about. Suppose I want a condition. So you condition. on x equals x, right? So this is uh, something that uh, Professor Arvind talks about. So, so if you look at this uh, join PMF, I could condition on x equals one or x equals two. Condition on x equals one, so I will have a conditional PMF of y conditioned on x equals one, okay? So y conditioned on x equals x, okay? So this is y conditioned on, uh, let me just do this, 1, x equals, so if you want to do this, uh, this sort of uh, PMF, okay, so if you condition on x equals 1, and then you do a PMF, so this is the conditional PMF. This would be PYX of PXY, I'm sorry, of X comma Y divided by 
px of x, right? So this is the formula here. So since uh, x is 1, so this is just pxy of 1 comma y divided by px of 1, okay? So we've calculated most of these things here. px of 1 is simply 0.15 and pxy will work out as 0.1 and 0.05, okay? So if you if you do that, we'll simply get uh, py given x equals 1 of y be the ratio of uh, these two guys. For different values of y, this will work out differently. So it's, it's, it's good to write down uh, like before, you put a y here, one, two, three, and then I want p y given x equals one of y. Okay, so this is going to be 0.1 by 0 0.15, 0 0.05 by 0 0.15, 0 by 0 0.15. So this will be uh, two by three, one by three, and zero. Okay, so that's the conditional PMF of y given x equals one. Is that okay? So basically the idea is you look at a particular column, okay, that will be the same proportion as the conditional PMF, except that you have to normalize it to 1. So you divide by the sum of all the values in that column. Okay, so 0 0.1 by 0 0.15, 0 0.05 by 0 0.15, 0 by 0 0.15, so you get that. Okay, the same thing on this side, uh, this is going to be a little bit more uh, messy in calculation, but it's the same thing. So you have to divide 0 0.3 by 0.85 to get the conditional PMF of y equals 2. So let me do that also here. So if you do y uh, given y given uh, x equals two of y one two three, you're going to have 0 0.3 by 0 0.85, 0 0.4 by 0 0.85. 0.15 by 0.85. Okay, if you want, you can simplify. You can divide by uh, 5, etc. So you would get uh, 6 by 17, 8 by 17, 3 by 17. Okay, so that's the conditional PMF of y given x equals 2. Okay, so these conditional PMFs uh, differ uh, based on uh, based on what you condition on, and the idea is to simply take the particular column and then divide by the sum of all these columns. Now I can also condition x on y. Okay, so let me do that also. If you if you look at, so this is again y conditioned on x equals two. Okay, so I might want to look at x conditioned on y equals one. Okay, so if I do that, x is one, two. So I've conditioned on y equals one. So this is just this row. I should take point 0.1 divided by point 0.4, point 0.3 divided by point 0.4. Okay, so it's 1 by 4, 3 by 4. Okay. You can also do x conditioned on y 2. So this would be 1, 2. If you condition on y equals 2, I'm going to get 0 0.05 by 0 0.45, 0 0.4 by 0.45. That's 1 by 9 and 8 by 9. Okay. In the last case, I might condition x on y equals 3. In this case, actually, you get a very, very simple uh, answer. If, if I condition on y equals 3, it's 0 and 0 0.15. So it's 0 divided by 0 0.15, 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.15. So in fact, actually, I get a trivial random variable, which is 0, 1. Okay, probability that x equals 2 given y equals 3 is simply 1. Okay, there's no other possibility given y equals 3. Okay. So hopefully this simple example showed you the various types of computations that one does with join PMF. And these are all very important to understand in a simple conceptual way, okay? The first type of computation with join PMF is computing the marginal PMF. Second type of computation is computing probabilities of events involving two random variables, which is greater, which is equal, or maybe even more complicated events. Maybe we'll see examples later on. And the third one is computing conditional PMFs given one of the random variables takes a particular value. So these kind of calculations are bread and butter. They're very, very important to understand, at least in simple cases like this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and give some examples from some sample spaces that we have considered uh, in the past of something uh, very similar and ask you to, ask, let's see the calculations of uh, uh, similar calculations, like what, what is the possibility of one thing being greater, lesser, etc. okay? Second example I'm gonna see so let's say we toss a coin five times, okay? And
and uh, so this this is a this is an interesting sort of situation but one needs to be a little careful here so now i have to start defining uh, multiple random variables uh, each toss can give me a head or a tail okay and i'm going to define the random variables in the following fashion i'm going to say x is number of heads in first two tosses okay and y is number of heads in last three tosses okay so we have five tosses toss one toss two toss three toss four toss five x is the number of heads in the first two tosses toss one and toss two okay okay and y is the number of heads in the last three tosses so this would be tosses toss three toss 4, toss 5. Okay, so that's the two random variables, x and y. Once again, think about uh, what these things are. And uh, and I have to, uh, so, so let's start by doing the, doing the PMF uh, like we did before, the joint PMF. Okay, so x is the number of heads in the first two tosses. It could be 0 or 1 or 2. y is the number of heads in the last three tosses. It could be 0 or 1, 2 or 3. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what is the probability that I get zero comma zero? Okay. So, I should have zero heads in the first uh, two tosses. Remember, the first two tosses. What happens in the first two tosses is independent of what happens in the last three tosses. They're not the same. There's no overlap. Okay. So, when there's no overlap like this, it's easy to compute uh, probabilities because I can multiply the events independently probability of x and probability of y can be multiplied because this what is what happens is independent of this so that's that's something that i can use okay so what is the probability that i have zero here it's one by four okay zero heads in two tosses and zero heads in three tosses it's again one by eight is that okay and then what is the probability of getting one toss uh, one heads in the first two that is actually uh, two by four and then zero tosses this would this would again be one by four times one by eight okay think about it and then I would have the same one by four multiplying here two by four multiplying here one by four multiplying here because the probability of x is the same probability of y becomes one out of three tosses I get one that's actually 3 by 8, right? So 3 by 8, 3 by 8. So likewise here I would get 1 by 4 times 3 by 8, 2 by 4 times 3 by 8, 1 by 4 times 3 by 8. Here I would get 1 by 4 times 1 by 8, 2 by 4 times 1 by 8, 1 by 4 times 1 by 8. Okay, so this is the joint beam. Think about how I got this once again. Uh, so, for instance, uh, this probability, I'll just show you how I got this. Probability that x equals 1, comma y equals 2. This is probability of x equals 1 times probability that y equals 2. Because what happens in x is independent of what happens in y. This is uh, intersection. So, I can multiply these two things. And this is uh, one toss. One heads in two tosses is 2 out of 4 possibilities. Two heads in three tosses, that is 3 out of 8. Okay, so this is just uh, binomial uh, calculations or okay, another way. So this is the idea. Okay, so this is your joint PMF. It's a little bit more, uh, uh, more slightly more complicated, but you'll see some some simplifications will happen. Okay, so supposing from here I want to do marginal, I have to just add up everything, right? So suppose I want to do marginal here, marginal PMF. X is zero one two. I have to add along the columns. If I add along the columns, I see that this 1 by 4 is common. And if I pull this 1 by 4 out, I get 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 3 by 8 plus 1 by 8. That's just 1. So I'll have here 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 1 by 4. It's easy to do this calculation. And if you do marginals for y, likewise, uh, you'll have 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can add up along the rows to get the marginals. You'll get 1 by 8, 3 by 8, 3 by 8, 1 by 8. It's easy enough to do that. Okay?
that's interesting so now let's do other calculations you can do more interesting calculations so for instance you can do let me just keep this here and do calculations around it i might want to calculate probability that x equals y okay so you can see that's the event that you have along this diagonal right this diagonal here uh, x equals 0 y equals 0 x equals 1 y equals 1 x equals 2 y equals 2 this diagonal so this will just be 1 by 4 times 1 by 8 plus 2 by 4 times 3 by 8 plus 1 by 4 times 3 by 8 okay one can simplify this calculation the 6 plus 3 is 9 9 by uh, 8 fourths are uh, 32 9 by 32 is that okay so that's the probability that x equals y probability that the number of heads in the first two tosses equals the number of uh, heads in the last three tosses is 9 out of 32 and you might you might want to do more calculation you might want to say probability that x is greater than y this would be 2 by 4 into 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4 into 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4 into 3 by 8 right x is greater than 2 x is greater than y is uh, this part right the right top side maybe i should show that here this is this calculation and that works out as 6 by no, 5 by that 5 by 32 so likewise you can do other events so in fact uh, uh, you can do uh, more uh, sophisticated uh, sort of events I, I might want to define uh, some, uh, some something slightly more uh, tricky so for instance I might say uh, I need uh, two more heads so for instance you might say probability that y is equal to x plus 2 I might want to say that. So this will correspond to these two guys, right? Right? So you just mark out that event and add. Okay, so you get uh, 5 by 32. Okay. So likewise, you can define any other relationship you want between x and y. y is less than x plus 2, y is greater than x plus 2, or any other any other way of <coughs> demarcating this area that you want to have, you can write and you can compute. Uh, probability it's the way in which uh, uh, this probability is being done okay, you can also do conditional probability exactly like I described before and in this case you'll see this interesting thing that the conditional probability conditional PMF is the same as the unconditional marginals okay so that comes from the independence as well okay so this was a slightly more uh, interesting example that comes from our uh, from our examples okay so you can also do uh, similar examples uh, so I think uh, I'll just finish with one more example. This is the third example I'm doing. Uh, this I will do for balls into bins. Okay. Always ends up being a little bit tricky and uh, we will not do it in great detail. Uh, but anyway, so I think it's good to finish up with one. So slightly more complicated example take uh, five balls into three bins okay so you have three bins one two three and you're throwing five balls I'm going to define two random variables here so let's say X is uh, similar to before number of balls in bin one Y is number of balls in bin two similar to before nothing uh, very fancy and if you want to do x y here uh, maybe I want to make this uh, even simpler so I'll just say three balls into three bits okay I'll make it very very simple so that we don't have to write down long calculations okay so there are three balls so the first bin could be zero or one or uh, two or three likewise the second bin could be zero or one or and we know that this, you know, there is this. Uh, there are only three balls that were thrown, so you can't have too many, uh, too many balls beyond this. So, so, so some things will go to zero. So, for instance, three comma one will go to zero. Three comma two will go to zero. Three comma three will go to zero. Two comma two will be zero. This will be zero. This will be zero. So, the upper triangular part, lower triangular part will go to zero. And some of these other things are easy to write down. For instance, the zero comma zero, all balls should go into the third bin, right? So that is just. Uh, 1 by 3 power 3 okay 
So the same thing will happen for this guy, right? 3 comma 0 means all the ball should go into the second bin. So that will also be 1 by 3 comma power 3, right? So some of these calculations are easy to do, right? Uh, all balls should go into the first bin, all balls should go into the second, no, all balls should go into the third bin. Okay, this is that uh, probability here. So this one is all balls should go into the second bin. And this guy here on, uh, on this side is all the balls should go into the first bin. Right, so that's this, that's an easy calculation to do. Uh, all other calculations are a bit uh, tricky. Uh, so let's try. Uh, I mean, I'm, you can try it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do this in uh, great detail here. So so all these calculations have to be done. There is a symmetry here, so you don't have to really calculate everything uh, exhaustively. If you calculate uh, the ones on the top right, you'll get uh, you'll get the ones on the bottom also exactly to be the same symmetry is uh, is going to help you but nevertheless you have to do a calculation here of at least three or four uh, numbers they are a bit messy but but if you do that you will get a joint pmf and with this joint pmf you can do a similar calculation there so for instance you might ask the question what is the probability that x is greater than y or x is equal to y okay so so let's ask that question so what's the probability that x will be greater than y so on the face of it, it looks uh, it looks quite difficult to uh, compute this, but one can say some interesting things about uh, about this uh, situation. So for instance, uh, so so if if you think about this, so even though we don't know much about what is probability of x greater than y, we can say for sure that this will these two will be the same, right? Probability that x greater than y and probability that x less than y will have to be the same. Why is that? There's symmetry in the situation, right? So whatever is on the uh, right, top right side will be the same as what's in the bottom left. So if you look at x greater than y, y greater than x, those are those two events, right? So x greater than y is this event. x greater than y and y greater than x is this event, right? So we can say that these two will be equal because of the symmetry of the situation so this kind of reasoning is, is very interesting to do in many problems so even though you don't know much about these probabilities actually you can compute them i'm not saying it's very hard but still without even computing you know that these two will be true in fact you can even say something more if you look at probability of x equals y okay right this plus probability of x greater than y plus probability of x less than y have to be equal to 1, right? So that's everything. So what is uh, x equal to y? It's this guy, right? This is x equals y. Okay. Together, they should all add up to 1. Okay. So these two are all the same. And these x greater than y and y greater than x, x, x less than y are also equal. Okay. So in fact, if you find the probability that x equals y, you can find the probability that x is greater than y and x is less than y without doing too much other work based on this symmetry. Okay. So this kind of reasoning will help your calculations a lot. Okay. So the only thing I need to really find to find probability that x greater than y is this guy. Okay. So what's the probability that x equals one, comma y equals one. Okay. So I have one ball in the first bin, one ball in the second bin, and what should happen to the third ball? It should go into the third bin. Okay. So what's the probability of that? So the first ball can go anywhere right it doesn't matter where it goes the second ball should go only into the other two okay so you have two out of three and the last ball should go only into the other three. so you will just have six by uh, cancel you simply get two by nine so this probability is two by nine okay so once I know that I know probability of x equals y so what's the probability that x is equal to y is 1 by 27, 1 by 3 power 3 plus 2 by 9. Okay, so that is 7 by 27. So what's the probability that x is greater than y? Okay, so if you look at this equation, these two are equal and this is 7 by 27. So I should do 1 minus 7 by 27 divided by 2. Okay, 2 times this is 1 minus 7 by 27. Okay, probability that x is greater than y. So if you do this, you get 20 by 27. Uh, and divided by 2, you get 10 by 27. So that's the probability that x is greater than y. Okay. 
okay so i mean of course i can do all these calculations and uh, come up with the answer it's not very complicated in this case but nevertheless it's nice to reason like this so, so supposing if i were to increase the number of balls to five balls ten balls this kind of reasoning will still help you i mean it's not it's not impossible to do uh, i mean it's still hard but not uh, a little bit uh, easier so i'll stop with this uh, as far as uh, computations with joint pmf is concerned uh, this is uh, quite important like i said uh, if, if given a joint pmf in this simple form like this you should be able to find the marginal should be able to find conditionals and you should be able to find probabilities of 